Welcome back to the 307 Podcast with Chad and Chili. Special episode. <laughs> is it? Is this a special one? Well, it's just me and you. Yeah, I know. It seems weird without... When you say something crazy, I can't look over at Blake. I know. We've lost our, our try kick. <laughs> Not even our side kick. It's our try kick. I know. It seems weird. I'm just going to have to, when you say something crazy, just look at you and nod. Just agree with me. <laughs> just agree with Whatever you. Whatever I say, just agree with me. <laughs> um, Welcome back to the 3-7 Podcast, guys. Blake is doing some, I think he's at a birthday party. He's doing some kid stuff. He's a father. Chili and I are not. We're living the bachelor life. My wife's out of town. Chili doesn't have in, a significant other in his life, so he just kind of drifts like this day to day. <laughs> I'm trying to keep up with him. But we figured we'd sit down here, do a podcast for you guys, talking about a very, um, I guess, sought-after subject, which is mindset and mental toughness. You know, we were having a conversation about this last night offline. And I said, man, that's a that'd be a good podcast. And so we're going to try to approach this topic from a realistic standpoint and not from a standpoint of like we're trying to sell you anything or, or trying to sell you a coaching program or nothing like that, right? So really our take and our own experience with mental toughness, um, essentially what is it? Are you born with it? Uh, can you develop it? How you can develop it? Like, what is it? What what does it look like in in day to day life? So, and what does it not look like? Because we, <laughs> I think we've seen more examples of what it doesn't look like than what it does look like. And of course, Chili and I have different opinions on a lot of this stuff. So that's why I think it'll make for a good conversation. Um, first of all, this. Episodes brought to you by Exoskin. Exoskin's been our partner on the 3 of 7 podcast since the beginning. They were the first company to invest into this podcast. So they mean a lot to us. Not to mention they make, in my opinion, the best quality fitness apparel on the market. Exoskin products are extremely unique. Um, the fabric used in Exoskin shorts and shirts and socks it's actually designed to channel moisture away from your skin. Cuts down on chafing and uh, just nastiness overall. It's got copper fiber woven into the fabric, which cuts down on odor-causing bacteria, which is important when you train as much as we train because it's nice to be able to wear a pair of shorts, hang them out on the fence after you're done with your workout and uh, go out back out that evening or the next day and throw the same pair of shorts on and not almost puke when you do it. So I, 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 that's a big advantage of Exoskin clothes. Um, they are 100% made in America, which means a lot to us here at 307 Project. Uh, it Obviously, it takes extra work for them to make that happen. Try to find other fitness apparel made in America. Go ahead. Try to find it. Good luck. Um, so we appreciate them. If you guys are... are getting ready to maybe come out and run our race, the 307 Project 50K. Uh, I highly recommend the Exoskin socks, shorts, tops. Uh, they've got arm sleeves now. They've got underwear. Uh, I know they just came out with some new color color designs for the uh, socks. I personally wear the toe socks <clears throat> and absolutely love them. Uh, you get what you pay for, man. This All this stuff that Exoskin puts out. It's high end and it's going to last a long time. At least that's if it does me. Some of the socks I got are like, I think I have one pair of socks from Exoskin that's probably like two and a half years old. No holes in them. They still work. So um, check them out. Exoskin.us online. Uh, I'll attach a link to their website in the show notes of this episode. Uh, check them out on Instagram. I'll attach their Instagram handle in the show notes here. And also a pro code that you guys can use as 307 podcast listeners 
to get a discount on your purchase with Exoskin. So thank you for sponsoring this episode, Exoskin. We love you guys. Speaking of ultra running, me and Chili just went and got the course dialed in for the 307 Project 50K. What do you think about it, Chili? Oh, I'm super excited about it. I think I think the real point I'd want to drive home and, and enticing anybody to come do it is it's it's really a mix of, of every kind of surface. I mean, there's gravel, there's single track, there's some some fast road, there's dirt and grassy sections, there's kind of wide fire roads. It's it's really got it all, and it's I think it's fantastic race for your first ultra. I think it's a great way to come get it, and if for nothing else, the community that's going to be out there. But I'm really happy with the course. I think it's fantastic. I'm also very happy with the course, and I'm kind of, I kind of judge it like I was telling Chili. I was kind of judging my take on the course based off of like, would I want to run that course? And the answer is yes. As a matter of fact, we are going to go run the course uh, again, probably tomorrow or Monday. Uh, we're going to do a little, kind of a little triathlon type thing. Uh, me and Chili are going to race each other. At least that's what we plan to do. Um, so yes, these these are like this is my training ground essentially. So I love to me it's the most it's one of the most beautiful places in Northwest Georgia. Yeah, uh, because you're just along the. I mean, eighty percent of the time you're running along the water. You've got magnificent views. Uh, the 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 way the terrain varies is just you you, you don't get bored out there because you know you find yourself on one section that's nice and flat and fast and then the next section you're going up a big climb on a fire road and deep in the woods and um i don't know man i'm so pumped about it I, i've wanted to race for a long time i just looked over it's still kind of surreal to me i looked over at chile when we were out kind of dialing the course in today and i said man we're race directors <laughs> can you believe that we've been to so many races and it's just really cool to be directing a race and to have the freedom of movement to make it exactly what we want to make it and what we think it should be. Yeah. And, and I've, like you said, we've done so many races and it, it really gives you an opportunity to think about what you like to see and what you want to change. And, and that's up to us to do it and, and, and give that, it won't be perfect, but give that really good experience for everybody who, who's going to come out and run it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I don't know, man. I'm really pumped about this event. And, you know, it was, um, we've got a good, uh, we've got a good field coming out. I mean, we've yeah. got over 70 runners coming out. Uh, we can hold more. I had to beg, bar and steal to get the permit to run the race <laughs> on this, on this park that we're running on. It's never been done before. Um, there's never been a race in this area in, in the park we're running on. And you said people have tried, right? Yeah. People have tried before to, uh, get permits to do some stuff over there. And, you know, it's just, there's a lot going on over there. Uh, a lot more than just the park, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? It's going on over there. So, um, you know, we got a permit that allowed us up to 200 people, but, uh, I think a lot of people are, a lot of people, oh man, you said it yesterday. A lot of people like the concept of ultra running, but what what was it you said? Well, I said a lot of people like the idea of doing an ultra, but they don't like what goes into doing an ultra. <laughs> the yeah. training yeah. and the, the hard work that it takes to be ready, and then the actual hard work of the day. Mm -hmm. I mean, people like the idea, I mean, this is relating to what we're going to talk about later. People like the idea of doing difficult things, but you got to actually like to do difficult things. Yeah. You know? So. Yeah, that's it, man. That's it. Yeah. I'm, I'm really happy with the amount of people we have coming out. Of course, the more the merrier, uh, in my mind, the more people we have out there, the, the better it's going to be. Cause the more you guys, we get to meet and hang out with and talk to. Um, but, yeah, I think I was I guess I was surprised that there are so many members of 3 of 7 project podcast listeners um Instagram people 
that are that are really hesitant to come out and do something like this. And the interesting thing about a 50k is, you know, I, I realize that you didn't have a lot of lead time on this particular race. We gave you what two months since mm-hmm. we released it to to race day. Uh, and the reason that we did that is because 50k is an interesting distance. It's long enough to be hard. I mean, it's it's going to be a tough day, a full day of running without a doubt. But it's short enough that as long as you are a fit, healthy human being, you can just keep moving and do well. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and that's that that's the cool thing about this distance, and that's why we chose the 50K distance instead of a 50-miler or a 100-miler is because we want to introduce the sport to as many new people as we possibly can and if you go over if you go into a 50 miler that really requires a training block like you know there there's a i think there's a significant difference between the two distances the 50k is is a if you are not an ultra runner or may, maybe you maybe you don't even enjoy running but you just want to challenge yourself that distance is long enough to be hard but short enough that if you don't get if you don't have the opportunity to put in a huge training block, you can still come out there as just a, a healthy human being and do well and have a good day. Now you show up to a fifty miler or a hundred miler and you haven't put in any training and you're just healthy, you're gonna get through it more than likely, but it's gonna be rough. It's it's gonna be real rough and ugly. Yeah, I mean you you it's a it is it does t- I hate even saying this but it does kind of turn into a different game at that point. It's more than just being a little bit fit and healthy. I mean it. You have to put in a legitimate running yeah training block in ahead of that. Yeah. yeah. I think PN may be coming out to run the race. He just told us today. We talked to him today. I hope so, man. I hope bringing this up will make him really yeah. feel like he has to. PN, you know, he's a he's a more of your through hiker type of fitness. I mean, he does CrossFit, but PN don't run. Well, he's, he's going P, to PN's now. PN's ran with me one time in the last two years, and I'm pretty sure that's the only time he's went. I, I'm not. Don't don't take my word for this, but I'm pretty sure that's the only time in the last two years he's went out intentionally for a run. Well, he's really fit, and he's a good athlete, and he's about to run 31 miles. That's what I'm saying, man. That's exactly what I'm saying. That's what I'm trying to get people to understand. So, I won't belabor the point. All I'm saying is, hey, if it's not my race, make it somebody else's race. I mean, I, I don't, I don't care. But it's a great opportunity, it really yeah. is. And don't let the fact that you haven't put in some big long training block stop you. From, from doing something like this because you're going to get significant benefit in all aspects of your life if you if you come out and give it a give it a fair shake when they've still got a month to register right yeah or the, over a month yeah yeah the race is September 11th so so I mean that's giving people more more time to more time to do it but I say go ahead and go ahead and sign up now and make it happen. Yeah, it's going to be a good day, man. Well, you know, one thing that helps when you're out on uh, doing ultra marathons is mental toughness. <laughs> yeah. It's, well, it, it's required on some level. What do, you, what do you think about this subject? I mean, what even is mental toughness, man, to you? I don't know. It's so hard to define. It's so hard to answer any questions about it in general or pertaining to me. I, I, all the questions you listed off that a lot of people want to know and ask at the beginning, I think those are great questions. I think they're valid questions, and I think they deserve some thought, but it truly is really difficult to answer for sure. I mean, I don't know the answer definitively to, to almost any of them. I mean, like what specifically? You well, know, I mean, you have to get into specifics to even talk about it because people just – 
people will bust off something on Instagram, a, a two-minute clip of them trying to motivate you, talking about mindset. That's a bunch of crap, man. That ain't helping nobody. I totally agree, man. There's a lot of fluff around this subject. Yeah. A lot of fluff. And, and I'm going to go ahead and, I, I mean, I, I have to, look, this is going to be a real conversation, guys. We're not here to hurt anybody's feelings, but we're here to approach this topic again from a realistic standpoint. There are a lot of people that promote mindset and mental toughness that that don't fit the definition of mindset and mental toughness. So it's it's a lot of fluff around this, man. And you know, I I think about you say it's hard to it, some of these questions are hard to answer of especially are is this something that uh, an individual is born with or is it something that can be taught or built into somebody? You know, that we talked about that last night. It's a, that's a hard question to answer because you know, unless you had a test group from birth that you could yeah you you could change variables and study their performance throughout their lives you know all we can do is look at our own lives and try to figure out where it came from if it came from anywhere or if it was it's just a special part mm-hmm. of us and I want to start this off. Well, okay, my definition of mental toughness, at least right now, as I as I think about it, is um, a a consistent reaction in duress, like consistently reacting properly while in duress. Oh yeah, that's Wh- what it is. Whether that's like physical, like physical, mental, whatever you're going through, okay. And I and consistent is important is an important part of this because there's plenty of people that can go out here and and put down a good one off performance or have a good day and find themselves in a tough situation and make the right decision. Right, but that to me is not mental toughness. Mental toughness has to have a component of consistency. So if I'm looking at a mentally tough person, I know that that person is going day after day is going to react properly when they find themselves in that tough situation. All right? So that consistency to me is a it, that consistent reaction is a real key component of mental toughness. Yeah, and what does that reaction look like? You know, I mean, I think that's important to even describe that. It's not I mean, part of what it is is it's not cowering in fear when <laughs> when something hard comes up. That's what a lot of people do. Their reaction is to back down. Yep. You know, instead of attack even harder. To back down or turn inward. So yeah. this is a big this is a big thing here for sure. Describe what that reaction looks like. We say that consistent, proper reaction and duress. Um, you're right, man. What it means, what that reaction looks like is is making the right decisions in order to move the mission forward in a forward direction. Um, treating the people around you maintaining respect with the people around you, right? And and maintaining a, a level of good communication with your team members, um, maintaining your ability to make um, fine muscle movements and, and, and dis, you know, actual physical movement. Uh, so what happens a lot of times you know, whether it's on the basic course or in ultra running or wherever, we see people that are not mentally tough and they find themselves in these situations where it's getting hard and all communication falls apart. Um, Their ability to remember to feed themselves, to remember to perform simple tasks, just generally take care of themselves and, and their team members all that falls apart. Um, the the way they treat other people, 
uh, their their team members or, or fellow competitors, all that just goes out the window, right? Because they what really what they do, what a, what a person that's not mentally tough will do, is they'll turn inward, and basically it's a self preservation mechanism, in my mind is what it is. So that's it. They just get really really selfish, and they get in their own head, and all they they're consumed by simply thinking about how they can get out of this situation. They're consumed by that. So whether it's, if it's an element, say the cold, that's causing the stress or the duress, they turn inward and all they're consumed by thinking, how can I warm up? Not how are my team members doing? What are they feeling? What do I need to do? How do, like... Even how can I tie, I've been taught how to, to put up this shelter. How do I tie this knot in this tarp in order to put this shelter up so then I can get warm? That all falls apart. They forget how to do any of that, right? And it's just a self-preservation mechanism. Yeah, well, you know, the, the theme amongst how you do that, I mean, you're describing really well what an, an, an unproper reaction looks like in duress, um, and a, a key theme amongst mentally tough people, or however you want to describe them, in times of duress is they stay in control of themselves, and they stay calm. It's control and calm. You know, you can't really be mentally tough if something, if duress comes over you and you start freaking out. That's true. That's not being tough. You have to stay calm and that's a part of staying in control of, of yourself. You know, when you're describing the, the well, lack of control that people have because they're so focused on themselves that they're uh, something else takes over them. And it's just about getting warm instead of continuing the mission. They're not in control. They're not in control of their forward progress anymore. I mean, and that's really a choice. In my in my in my opinion, um, and the, so if you if you don't have this, you just lose that control. I think. Well, you know that's interesting that you say that's a choice, because I th- I think that leads into some some deeper conversation. Is is your default a choice? You you know what I mean? Because that's essentially what's happening. To, to a human that finds themselves in this uncomfortable situation, they're falling back on their default, right? That, that, is, that has become, the, the reaction has become their muscle memory. Has become. Yeah. So maybe, it, so that you're saying, I'm ultimately saying- it's a choice that leads, wi- that, 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 that can be traced back for, you know, yeah, a I, long, long I'm time. saying essentially everybody's default, every flawed human's default is to lose control and turn inward when duress happens. I think you can make this argument that potentially everyone's default is that. But when you see mentally tough people, they're making the choice to not do that. I mean, I think that's, that's a possible explanation. I don't even know if I think that that's true. It's so hard to know. But I, I think that's possible. But I don't know, because like when you think about how you've reacted personally in tough situations, it's like you don't even think about going there, you know? Uh, yeah, that's what I, I'm saying. I mean, yeah. it's not even, na- it's like not natural for so, me to think about. So I don't is, know. Which I, is why I'm saying. I know. I, it's yeah, it's I, so I, hard. I don't, I don't know that it is a choice because, you know, when I, when I find myself in those situations, and quite quite regularly, I mean, as an instructor on the basic course, you're subjected to the elements, and you guys that have been on the basic course, you might look at us as instructors and and think that we we feel no pain and <laughs> we feel no cold and or we feel no heat or or wet or no, we feel all that. We're subjected to these things um, multiple multiple times a month because of our training load, because of our uh, our business and. Um, so, 
I look at myself and I say, you know, when I'm subjected to those situations, am I having to am I having to make a conscious decision in my own head about the way I react? And really, the answer is no. I'm not. It, it, it's not. It's not a decision for me. It's not a choice for me. I react the way I react. I react properly because that is muscle memory. That is default. That is that is who I am. That is the fibers of who I am. And I literally, there's no choice in the matter. Well, I just thought about this. Maybe, maybe it is still a choice because what you're describing there is a habit. Well, it's become a habit of yours. So you decided that you were going to start making that choice a long, long time ago, and you've stuck to it. You've been consistent ever since then. So it's it, it actually is a choice every time, but it's an easy choice to make because it's become a habit. Well, I mean, I don't know, man. Yeah. It's so hard to think about. Well, this is, I mean, again, we're dealt. I want to, I want to search out the. Nobody else has these conversations. I mean, I, I want to search out the bottoms of this topic and really. Yeah figure out exactly what it is and i mean and if that's the case that that ought to give people hope though yeah yeah i mean really i mean you're talking about you're talking about it as a habitual reaction i call it muscle memory yeah um same thing you know i was blessed in a way uh you know i've been subject to these really harsh conditions and difficult situations for a long long time it's you know as a seal consistently and, uh, you know, you said I made the choice long ago about how I was going to react in these situations. And I even go back to those days and I think, you know, I was put in situations as a SEAL where I had no choice. I say I had no choice. I could have chosen to die or ultimately I could have chosen to quit. But I had no, I, when I say I had no choice, it means yeah, there was still some choice there, yeah. but but if you made the wrong choice, the repercussions were much more significant for making the wrong choice than if you decide to make the wrong choice out on the ultra running field and you have to walk to an aid station and get a ride back to the start line. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So... That was a beautiful thing for me in my walk. Uh, if we're looking at this as building muscle memory in order to become mentally tough, is uh, in my life, and and also I also think you could apply this to a lot of people's lives, like John Hogue that was just on the podcast. People that have survived cancers, surgeries, um, prisoners of war. Um, people that were in, they were really in situations where there was, there was still a choice, but the choice was either to live, to make the right decisions and to keep going or, or to die. Yeah. That'll help you build some muscle memory right there, son. Well, exactly. I mean, how I think about any of those things, I mean, you're, you going through, seal training and then in a, a you know a long career as a seal it, it was re, re, repeated uh moments like that and situations every day basically uh, you know and but but the question is did that make you mentally tough or were you born with that and that helped hone it well that yeah we're going to dig into that here in just a minute I do. I I, I want to hit on something real quick, though, and I want to get your perspective on this before we move off of this question of what is mental toughness. Um, we the the other component of the definition that I offered for mental toughness is uh, we had the consistency portion, cons- the consistent um, proper reaction in moments of duress. Okay. I want to talk talk about those moments of duress, those hard moments that we find ourselves in where those moments define whether we are mentally tough or not, right? But I want to talk about those moments specifically and, you know, me as a as a frogman, a navy seal. Like I can remember 
I can remember doing, okay, I hated diving. Diving was freaking the worst part about being a SEAL to me. It was the most dangerous thing that we did, and it was just slap miserable. I remember doing a, a dive, you know, down in, uh, I think we were in Key West, and it was a nighttime dive, and there was a portion of the dive where we, we got into this strong current, man. We got into this, it was just ripping, dude. And um, we ended up having to come up to the surface because the current was literally just like just like rolling us across the, the ocean floor, uh, just ripping through there. And we had to come up to the surface, and tur- we called it turtle back. So you're on the surface, you're on your back, and you're just kicking. And this big dragger, this big dive rig is sitting on your stomach. So you look like a turtle, right? But you're on the surface... And this current is just washing over my face. And I had to do this turtle back for like two miles to to get out of that current and to get near to my objective where we could go back on bag and subsurface again. And the whole time, man, the water's hitting me in the in the face and like pulling me under. And, you know, I'm just half drowning for for hours. And that was a moment of like extreme discomfort and duress and serious repercussions if you panic and and give up. You will drown. If you give up, you will drown. Yeah. Period. And um, you know, that was a moment of stress. It was really uncomfortable and it really sucked. I was not laughing about it. I was not enjoying it. (laughs) I was not... I am not one of those guys that gets in a really sucky situation and, like, sits there and laughs about it. No. I'm one of those guys that I... If I'm in a sucky situation... I'm going to, I'm, I'm honest with myself. I mean, I mean, I'm talking about really sucks. Yeah. I'm not talking about you're out in a rainstorm. I'm talking about really, really bad. I'm going to be straight up. I'm like, this freaking sucks. But now I had guys that I served with in the teams that weren't like that, man. Yeah. Well, I mean, what do you, how do you react to those? Well, I mean, it's tough it, it, it because it almost depends. It, it's like, I mean, if I was in that situation, I don't know, man. I, I'm almost one of those guys who laughs at it in a way. Like, like if I get, if I get to a point in a race where before, I, I mean, I've never had any injuries from a race, but I mean, it's stuff has just happened that went beyond you know, normal fatigue, I, I guess. And, and I don't know, sometimes I just laugh at it. Like I almost like it. I like, yeah. it's like, finally I've got to that point. Yep. But I mean, that was because I set out seek. I mean, I went out seeking that. So if, if something had came on me like that, that I, <laughs> I wasn't even, I wasn't trying for, you know, if I, you end up, I end up in the water having to, what do you call it? Turtle back, turtle back. for two miles. And I didn't expect that. <laughs> I'd probably be going Gosh, this sucks. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, probably. I don't know. I'd have to be put in those situations because I can sit here and say all day long I've, I, you know, I, I would laugh at it or whatever, but I've definitely been in situations where I've said this sucks before. And sometimes it, it, we're, we're kind of really talking about physical stuff, but talking about non-physical situations that I haven't handled very well, you know? Yeah. And I've just been like, f- fell apart about just not wanting to deal with it. Yep. So there, Taxes. there's that too. Taxes. Yeah. Taxes. <laughs> I mean, pretty much. I mean, it's that kind of stuff that, I mean, I don't handle it. It's pretty piss poor how I handle it. So I, I've seen, I've seen both types of men in my life for sure. Um, and the reason I bring this up is because 
I, I wanted to to clearly define this to people. You know, we talk about the the consistent proper reaction to that stressful situation. That is mental toughness. Now, the person you you can have you can have a person like me that finds themselves in being surf tortured in SEAL training, all right, and I absolutely hate it. The person like me, and and I'm and I look over at my buddy, and I and I tell myself, "Holy crap, this sucks! I cannot wait till this is over." I can do that, but still be mentally tough. Yeah. All right. Then there's the guy on the other side of the spectrum, like my my old buddy uh, Aaron Evans. Aaron, no man. He did, he, he, the harder, the more painful, the more dangerous it was, the more he loved it. I mean, legitimately, I never once saw this dude not just, I mean, he would just smile in the face of the most severe discomfort. Yeah. Well, honestly, I I think. But that's not mental toughness. That that to me is not mental toughness. We were both of us on both those spectrums. We both made the right decisions in those moments in order to stay in the fight and proceed with the mission. The way we felt about the discomfort that was being inflicted upon us was different. But we both made the right decision, the made the right had the right right reaction to the stressor. And won the fight every time. You see that dynamic there? Yeah. Well, I, I go ahead. I mean, maybe this is worth saying right now. I, I don't, because all I can really speak of is, well, it's not all, but I mean, the, the primary method uh, or, or mode that I can speak about myself being in is, is ultra running. And I don't, <laughs> in those moments, when I can think about me having reactions that I'm not proud of in ultra running, it's not when stuff got hard. It's usually when I realized I wasn't going to accomplish my goal, you know? And, like, that that's typically whenever I've not been happy with how I've reacted. Um, but when stuff, like, gets hard, I, I actually enjoy that. I mean, that's what I'm looking for. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I, I want every race I do to be the worst conditions. So would you consider yourself mentally more mentally tough if you learned how to react properly in those moments where you realize you're not going to achieve the result that you want to yes. achieve? Yes. Yeah. I mean that I would be That's more, a whole new dynamic yeah. of mental toughness. Yeah, I would be more mentally tough if I had handled those situations better. That's right. Um cuz we talked about that yesterday. I'm just I'm just real results oriented, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's really not, honestly, I don't even do it a lot during the race because I don't ever give up that I'm going to concede the victory to somebody else until it's over, over. But once it's over, then I I don't act mentally tough in that way at all because I get, you know, pissed off that I didn't win and everything. I mean, that's, and that doesn't do you no good. Uh, I like that, man. And I think that's a part of mental toughness and. I think I think it is. And if, I, I ain't been real mentally tough in that way. If we're looking at it as as really the the whole picture, yeah, right. It it really is, man. It really is. So, you know, I think a lot of people get I, a lot of people confuse another person the way another person feels about the discomfort they're going through. The way they feel about that discomfort. That's not mental toughness. So you can, if if you can see, if if you ever see someone that is is having some pain inflicted on them, and they're they're like they're like laughing about it. Yeah, that's not mental toughness. No, that's just in my book. That's just a different aspect that some people have. That's like, right. I li- I mean, what's that called? Like masoch- masochism. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm almost that way. 
Mm-hmm. But uh, mental toughness is when you react properly to things that are discomfort for you. Right? I mean, like, not. I don't think discomfort is universal. No, there I are mean, many different like, forms of it. Some people have major discomfort if they go out and run 10 miles easy. I don't I, at all. I really enjoy that, yeah. and I don't have discomfort. Uh, some people really do. And, like, taxes, you're talking about. Well, you know what's uncomfortable for me? Going to a concert. Yeah. Being in a large Social crowd. Se- <laughs> yeah, like, me too. Being in a large crowd, that's that's really that's really uncomfortable for me. And if you don't handle that situation well, it's not being as mentally tough as you could. That's right. Am I mean, I, truly. Am I able to rein that in yeah. and, and function in that environment? Yeah. That's a picture of mental toughness. Absolutely. There we go. Yeah, it's what it's what is hard for you. It's how you react mm-hmm. to what is hard for you. I, I just want to. I just want to clear this up, though. You being a, if a, a masochist, if that's the right word, yeah, is not a necessarily a mentally tough person. No, not at all. Because see that that's how my you know my buddy Aaron. He was essentially a masochist. Yeah, like he he literally thrived on physical pain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And, but, but then me, his buddy, I freaking hated cold water, dude. The whole time I'm being surf tortured, I'm like, I can't freaking wait till this is over, man. But we both reacted and stayed in the fight and got the job done and didn't quit and made the right decisions for us and for the team. We didn't turn inward. We, we, we continued on. All right. Yeah. So, well, is that just the? I mean, this is a question. Is that just the difference between mental toughness and physical toughness, or is that too no, simple no, of a way I, to put I, it? I, I don't. I, I no. I think. I think I'm just as physically tough. No, I didn't as, mean you weren't. I meant like you had to display. You both displayed physical toughness in going through that, but only you displayed mental toughness because he was just having a freaking ball. <laughs> that's what i'm saying yeah i mean i mean i don't know i i'm just <laughs> yeah it's, it's hard it, to define it all really this. is there's some there's some gray there's some gray to to really really search out in your in your own mind yeah. in those things so um but yeah man you know that's that's i think scratching the surface at least of what mental toughness actually is what i should say i I mean i think it's good to consider the full spectrum of mental toughness because it shows where i lack i would say where everybody i mean you can i I, it's hard for me to believe that somebody can't find an area of their life where they're not tough like mentally tough where you can't become or at least be conscious of your lack of mental toughness. (laughs) yeah and because i don't like to admit that or think about that at all but there's plenty that I ain't mentally tough about. Mm-hmm. Ain't, <laughs> you know, just, just slap ain't and don't, and ain't hardly ever been, I guess. I mean, just stuff I don't like to do and just brush it off. Yep. I mean, that don't make you feel good to think about stuff like that, but I think you need to. Well, there we go, guys. That's, um, that's us trying to define what mental <laughs> toughness is. And I think it has to be defined so that we have some level of understanding of what we're talking about when we use that word mental toughness uh, as as we proceed with the conversation about um, can, and we'll pick up on the next episode, we'll answer the questions now that we've defined it, at least in our own minds. I don't know if you guys understood any of that. (laughs) We did a little bit. Um, yeah, we'll pick up in the next next episode, and we'll talk about can you build mental toughness, and if you can, what do you do to become more mentally tough? Or I think there's a there's a case to be made that certain individuals just have it. And and that's a whole other spectrum. It, it, I think you could make a legitimate case that some people are not ever going to be mentally tough. All right? So, those are tough questions, man. We'll pick up on those on the uh, 
next episode. Hope you guys are enjoying this little mental toughness series that Chili and I are going through here. Talk to y'all soon. Enough said.